Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Mr. Jane. You're watching Electric Avenue. This is episode number eight. Uh, this is the July edition. And as you know, we're going to talk about uh, cars sold in India in the EV space for July. We're going to talk about any new EV news and launches. And today's deep dive, we're going to talk about my EV6. So talking about the running costs of comparing it versus an ICE versus an EV. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of the car now that I've had it for six months, driven over 2,500 kilometers, which is not a lot, but for me, it's a lot. So we'll talk about that. And in the last segment, we'll talk about the BMW iX. So I've seen a lot of i7s recently and, of course, iXs uh, on the road. I've not seen too many i4s, but every time I see that iX on the road, it just has got a really good presence on the road. So I thought I'd talk about it. And so let's get into it. Let's jump into the numbers. All right, so actually before we get to the numbers, it's kind of funny. I think you guys know my love for the 911 you can see here. And if you look at the number of subscribers right now for Electric Avenue, we're actually sitting at 911 subscribers. So I was kind of happy about that number, but I'm also kind of sad that it's kind of a low number. But anyways, you know what? Do what you got to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But anyways, that's kind of uh, just kind of a funny number that I kind of came across. Uh, so let's kind of get into the numbers. So one of the things you'll first notice is I've uh, been looking at evreporter.com, which is a great website for all the details around EVs. I would highly recommend you visit it. And they've actually launched a new service, which we'll get to. But in this, uh, you know, you can kind of take a look at, you know, exactly how you compare the two wheelers versus the four wheelers uh, and then versus, you know, all the different other aspects of the EV space here in India. Uh, but of course, the ones that we're most concerned about is on the four wheeler side. And as usual, you know, Tata is number one with their three EVs in the space. Uh, then you've got MG Motors, then you've got Mahindra. And it's all kind of similar. Uh, so one of the things that everyone's talking about is now that the fame subsidies have kind of have gone away. Let's hope that they can kind of continue with these sales, uh, both on the two two wheeler side, three wheeler, and the four wheeler side. So it remains to be seen what actually happens with uh, EV sales. But I just feel like the government is going to do whatever it can to kind of keep on pushing this new industry down, uh, you know, the path of you know making it successful and hopefully turning it into an export hub. Kind of like how China is an export hub for a lot of the cars for BYD. So I think India kind of wants to do the same thing. So I'm hoping the government really focuses on that. And let's see. But anyways, the numbers are not bad. They could be better. Uh, and like I said, I'm getting all this data from a new service. It's from EV Reporter and it's their data portal. So they've got, you know, they've got a lot of EV data that they're kind of aggregating. And it's really for professionals, obviously. But I think, you know, more and more people will be start using this service and, you know, something to take a look at. Uh, this is not a paid sponsorship. It's just that where I get my data from. And it's just really easy because they kind of get all the data formulated into one location. So those are the numbers. Now let's move on to the next segment. All right. Now we are on to EV news and launches. So the first one, as you can see here, is MG has launched a new ZS EV with ADAS at around 28 lakhs. So that's got all the, you know, driver assist features that a lot of the new cars have from Kia and Hyundai. I think it's great. ADAS at, at first was a little concerning, but I think more and more cars that have it, I think it's much better. So they're launching it with their uh, latest version of the MG ZS EV. Number two, uh, this was a story that was kind of there, then kind of disappeared. So BYD was seeking a billion dollar plan for building EVs and batteries in India. I think it was there, then it kind of went away, and they were saying they're gonna partner with a large company uh, like a JSW Group. Not sure, I think it kind of uh, went away as well, but this was kind of something that was happening in uh, mid-July that they were talking about, so not really sure if it was more political posturing to get the news out there or if it's a real deal, but hopefully something happens with BYD in India. A uh, third story that was of kind of significance is, uh, you know, the Mahindra Mahindra passenger EV unit uh, got funding from Tamasek, which is one of the largest uh, sovereign funds of Singapore. So that's actually a great 
you know, stamp of approval that Temasek is investing in Mahindra Mahindra's EV unit. So let's see what that kind of entails. You know, they're putting in about 145 million, which is not a lot, I would imagine, for an automotive company. But I mean, I think more than anything is getting outside approval from a large investor like that to kind of show that, you know, the plans that m and have are really good. So we're hoping big things happen out of that. And Remains to be seen, but you know, everything that I've seen so far out of the M&M group has been subpar to say. You know, they've got the SUV, uh, the EV 400 that came out that is okay, nothing great. Uh, but of course, as you can see, this picture here has got a very futuristic looking EV. And I'm really hoping that they can kind of get these kind of cars pushed out into the market. So that's a wrap on the news and launches for the month of July. All right, so we're at the deep dive. And like I said, this is gonna be a six month update on my EV6. So as you can see, a little bit of the details of it is, you know, I booked the car back in November, 2022, uh, took delivery in February, 2023. And so now it's been six months since then, and I've driven over 2,500 kilometers, which when I told people, they're like, that is nothing. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. So I thought I'd go back and see how much I drove on my credit when I got that back in 2017. And so actually the first six months that I had the Creta, I only drove that about a uh, little less than 1400 kilometers because it actually came with 80 already on the odometer. So not much. And as you can see, I actually keep track of the fuel that goes into the car to kind of get an understanding of how much is the average, the price increases. So imagine back in the uh, beginning of 2017, petrol prices were around 77 rupees a liter. So, so the thing is I've got great stats on my Creta and I can compare it to the EV. Not that I've got too much running on the EV, but still, you know, we're gonna do that now. So, like I said, you know, if I look at the history of my Creta, I've now had it for almost, uh, you know, since 2017 to July, 2023. So, you know, you can kind of see there. Uh, let me just, put that in here. So that's, there you go. And so far I have driven it a total of around 31,000 kilometers. And the average I'm getting per liter is around eight and a half kilometers per liter. So if you divide the current price of a liter is around 106.25 rupees a liter, divide by 8.5, I'm it's, it's right now costing me around, let me just kind of back this out. It costs me around 12.5, rupees per kilometer to run the Creta. And that's just fuel cost to get me from point A to point B. Now, if we compare that to what I've got in the EV, uh, like I said, I don't have too much, but I'm just gonna take the last three months uh, from the electricity bill that I got from BEST, which is the local provider of power. So you can see here that I've got, uh, this is the current month of August, and this is June and July. So for the past three months, I've consumed a total of 250 kilowatt hours at a total cost of around 2,255 uh, 2, rupees. So that comes around uh, nine rupees per kilowatt hour. And that's the subsidized rate here in uh, Bombay. And of course, as you use more and more, uh, you know, it kind of comes down or the, the rates go up actually. So I think the first 100 or first 200 units are fairly subsidized, then it kind of inches up. But anyways, you know, I'm currently getting around five kilometers per kilowatt hour when I sit in my EV6 and it gives me the stat. So if I kind of multiply that out or divide that out, I'm getting close to, you know, it's costing me about 1.8 rupees uh, per kilometer running. So if I compare 1.8 versus 12.5, you can see the reason why all the logistics companies, all the transportation companies, everyone is really focused uh, around electrical vehicles because the running costs are so much better and so much cheaper. And the big thing you don't have to worry about is theft of petrol or diesel, all of that just kind of goes away. So that's one of the reasons why people move to electrics. Now for me, obviously, you know, I'm saving a little bit of money here on the, on, on the running cost, but obviously the cost for me to buy that EV was very expensive. So I'm not even going to try to say, you know, it's saving me money. I bought the EV because I wanted to, you know, use the latest and greatest technology. And that just happens to be in the EVs. So that's kind of the running costs of my EV6. 
Next, let's talk about the cons. So I thought I'd break this up into the three cons and the three pros. So the pros and cons. So let's go through the cons first. What I can tell you is, man, I just am not a big fan of the sound system. I find it very subpar. Uh, I've sat in several Teslas and that sound system in the Tesla is way better, like almost 10 X, 100 X. Uh, but you know, I'm living with it. It's not that bad, but it's also not that great. So that's number one that I'm not a big fan of. Number two, I'm definitely not a fan that it does not have a spare tire. Of course, that is a very standard thing on EVs is because there's just no space because the battery tag, battery pack takes up all of the space in the floorboard. But you kind of have to live with it. So that's the reason why you've got a lot of different things like, you know, tire pressure monitoring. It's got a tire inflation kit in the car if something happens. But bottom line is nothing beats a spare. But of course, that's not there. And the third and the biggest one is the door handles. You know, when I first got this car, I thought it's so cool how these door handles pop out. I thought, oh man, that's so futuristic and everything. But I've come to realize, man, they are more of a pain in the ass than anything else. Because the truth is, no one knows how to actually open the door with it. Uh, even I find it, it's actually a, a two-hand method because you pull it and then you use a second hand to grab the door frame. So it's not all that great. So that's that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is it just gets so dirty because since the door handles are recessed all the time, you can see all of this dirt that is here that's sitting on top of it. So that's dust and that's dirt and it's just an accumulation and it's sort of a pain. So that is the cons that I really don't like about the car. Uh, but like I said, that's three, not a big deal. But the pros, whoa. So actually, let me just, before I get to the pros, this is one of the pictures I took of the car about uh, about a week ago. I was uh, taking this car down to Horniman Circle and this is actually the very first Starbucks in India. Uh, of course, run by the Tata Group and the Tata Group actually owns this entire building that you see here. And so that's the reason why, you know, the Tata, the Starbucks is sitting in this one. So this is early morning, Sunday morning. That's the reason why there's literally no one there. But let's get to the pros. And the first one is I just love the torque of the car. I mean, it is just too good. You just hit the pedal and it just takes off. So for me, number one is the torque. You feel great. Number two is the one pedal driving. I absolutely love that. So I've got it set to very aggressive regen braking. So the minute I left, let off the accelerator, the car almost comes to a complete still, a complete halt when I'm going like, you know, five or 10 kilometers an hour. And third, the first and foremost really uh, is the looks of the car. It just looks very unique. You know, um, like I said, I love taking pictures of cars all over Bombay. I'm known as a car spotter, but it's so funny to be on the receiving end when people are taking pictures of my car, which is something I'm not used to. And I can understand why, because it just looks so different, the car. So that's, that's the third thing that I love. But, you know, taking all three of these, these three pros completely outweigh the cons that I've listed. Uh, overall, it's a great car. Like I said, at the price point, it's a little spendy. I'm not sure, you know, but I love it. And I would recommend this car to anyone if you can look past the price point. Otherwise, it's a great car. So that's kind of the six month update on my EV6. All right, everyone, we've made it to the last section, which is EV car spotting. And as I mentioned, you know, I've lately seen more and more of these BMW iXs on the road. Here's an example of one that just, uh, you know, I just think the car looks really good. I love the black one. It's all just really looking very nice. Of course, I know owning a black car, it is a pain to maintain, to keep it clean. But otherwise, this one looks really good. Uh, so some of the stats on it, uh, you know, it's got a 425 kilometer range. It's got a 76.6 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is very similar to the EV6. Zero to 100 kilometer time is also very similar to the EV6. Does it in six seconds. Uh, the difference is this car costs almost twice as much. Comes in at around, I think, 1.3 crore on road in Bombay. But like I said, looks very nice. I think BMW has done a really good job. Even the interiors are really, really good. So, you know, I would say, you know, BMW is doing much better. Their i4 is I would say subpar, but definitely the iX and the i7, which I'm seeing more of, are both also really good cars. So, you know, kudos to BMW for kind of upping up their EV game. 
So there you go. Anyways, that's a wrap for episode number eight of Electric Avenue. Hopefully you found this informational. And until next time, see you later. Oh no, we're gonna rock down to Electric Avenue. And then